the visual world is governed by the colors in the spectrum of light. Within this vast array of color, there are primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. The auditory world is no different. The spectrum of noise governs all that we hear. And just like the visual world, there are primary, secondary, and tertiary frequency colors, as well as primary and secondary noise colors. Your primary frequency colors are not hard to find. Simply begin with the integer pi, which is 3.14, and double it repeatedly. 3.14 becomes 6.28, then 12.56, 25.12, 50.24, and so on. You will quickly begin to see some very familiar numbers that appear on many professional hardware equalizers. These are your primary frequency colors. Secondary frequency colors can be found by simply adding half of a primary frequency color to itself. Or in other words, take a primary frequency color and add the previous color to it such as 100.48 plus 50.24 equals 150.72, or 1607.68 plus 803.84 equals 2411.52. These are your secondary frequency colors. Just like the visual colors, there are tertiary colors as well. Tertiary frequency colors exist between the primary and secondary colors. They can be found by taking a primary color and adding the second previous color, or using the equation for secondary colors, then adding the second previous color to it. For instance, 100.48 plus 25.12 equals 125.6, or 100.48 plus 50.24 plus 25.12 equals 175.84. These are your tertiary frequency colors. Now your primary and secondary noise colors are much easier to remember. Beginning with white noise, every integer of 3 dB per octave weight is going to be a primary noise color, while every additional 1.5 dB per octave weight will be a secondary noise color. In other words, white, pink, brown, minus 9, minus 12, minus 15, etc. are primary noise colors, while minus 1.5, minus 4.5, minus 7.5, etc. are secondary noise colors. The three most common primary noise colors, white, pink, and brown, are used often for full spectrum equalization such as overall frequency balancing during the audio mastering stage or equalizing your speakers to obtain a flat room response. All noise colors will help you move elements further forward or further back in a mix depending on their weight. The heavier the weight or steeper the slope, the more distant an element will sound. As with everything in life, experimentation is key but understanding primary, secondary, and tertiary frequency colors, as well as primary and secondary noise colors, will give you a great starting point to easily deal with any audio sound source. Happy mixing.